Hello and welcome back to our video roundup. I'm Michael Marshall and I'm going to take you through my favourite science videos from the past week. First off, we find out how a Playmobil boat floating in a tank of water has managed to explain a bizarre sailing phenomenon called dead water. Sandrine Kerstermont tells us more. Ships travelling in cold waters can experience a peculiar phenomenon that makes them slow down for no apparent reason. The effect is called dead water and can happen when a glacier melts into the ocean and creates a less dense layer of fresh water on top of the seawater. Underwater waves are formed that can grind the boat to a halt. Researchers recreated these conditions in a lab by filling a tank with salty water and pouring a layer of fresh water dyed red on the top. As the boat moved forward, waves were created at the boundary between the two types of water. Soon, underwater waves started to follow the boat and they gained speed until they caught up with it. At this point, the depression that formed below the vessel slowed it down. The wave eventually broke against the side of the boat, allowing it to get back to its normal pace. In another experiment, the researchers tried to better simulate real ocean conditions by using three layers of water of varying saltiness. The dead water effect didn't seem to change, but the researchers planned to study the system in greater detail. It could give insight into how pollutants mix in seawater and eventually sink down to the bottom of the ocean. Next, a new coral reef has just been discovered in the Seychelles and researchers have found that it still bears the scars of the 2004 tsunami. Divers exploring Curieuse Island stumbled upon this extensive coral reef full of underwater life, but researchers have now found evidence of destruction caused by the massive Asian tsunami of a few years ago. Some species have recovered, but others were more severely affected by the changes. When they compared different species, the researchers were able to identify mechanisms that were responsible for their tolerance. They hope to establish a research facility on the island so they can continue investigating the fate of the reef. Finally, we find out how bisexual bonking is helping some male beetles become fathers. Sandrine Kerstemont tells us more. These two male beetles are enjoying a romantic moment, but their behaviour isn't unique. Male-on-male -male action is common among insects, and it's been suggested that it's a way to establish dominance or to practice for heterosexual encounters. Researchers tested these theories by placing male flower beetles in a container. The beetles mounted each other and copulated, often transferring sperm from one beetle to another. But the researchers noticed for the first time that when a male mated with a female later on, it occasionally passed on the other male's sperm. Only 1% of offspring were actually fathered by the foreign sperm, but the researchers think it could be one of the benefits of male-on-male -male mating. That's all for today, but you'll find lots more science stories on our website. For example, find out how to make x-rays from sticky tape, or take a look at some stunning computer graphics that are helping us understand spinning vortices. See you next time.